Hey everyone, welcome to another episode of High Energy Keto Girl. And today's guest is the awesome Christy Gardner from Eat Keto Love on Instagram. She is a certified keto coach and has a great transformation story of her own, and she loves inspiring her followers to do the same. So let's go and say hey to Christy. Hey everyone, welcome to High Energy Keto Girl, a podcast helping women to age stronger because it is never too late to get fit, be strong, and feel sexy. I'm your host, Tracy Gluhide, health coach and personal trainer and founder of highenergygirl.com. Each week we will either have a guest interview which will provide you encouragement or an actionable tip to help you age stronger, or I will do a solo episode. Please also join our awesome Facebook group called High Energy Girls, and I'm looking forward to see you on the inside of that group and hope you enjoy today's show. Hey everyone, this is Tracy and I have a special announcement. In order for me to help more women age stronger, I have created a 90-day one-on-one coaching program. And the goal here is to teach women over 50 how to age stronger while burning fat and boosting energy without going hungry or living in the gym. If you'd like more information, please hit me up at tracy at highenergygirl.com or friend me on Facebook and send me a message. I have a goal of transforming a thousand women in the next year, and I hope you are one of them. Hey, Christy, welcome to the show, girl. Hi, thank you for having me. Oh, I'm super excited. I have seen your transformation pictures, and I am very inspired to hear all the juicy details about you. So why don't you tell the listeners about yourself? Um, well, I, I am a stay at home mom with, um, a bunch of different jobs. Actually, I'm 43. I have lost over 110 pounds with keto and I've, I've learned, learned to live differently and make better choices. Um, that they're life choices now. So 110 pounds. That is remarkable. So congratulations, first of all. Thank you so much. And I when, appreciate that. Well, it's it's a feat, and I'm so proud of you. When did you start this? I started September 25th, 2018. Okay, so two years ago? Wow. Uh, about like, a year and a half. Oh, September. I thought you said February. I don't know why. They don't even sound the same. <laughs> I'm such a dork. <laughs> Okay, so a year and a half, so it's 110 pounds. Oh my God, that is like so much weight to lose. So, yes, yes, I actually lost the majority of it. It it came off real fast. Um, from from uh, November or no, I'm sorry, October to January, um, there was a 60 pound difference, and it it came off fast. Uh, and then after that, it slowed down and I took it slowly and I was totally okay with that. I wasn't in a rush. Um, cause that, that helps when you do it, you know, slower, at least for me, it helped cause I, my mind changed with it. So, well, and it gives your, ch- your skin a chance to catch up, right? Yes, <laughs> that's true. That's true. I do. Um, however, I do have, you know, loose skin underneath my chin that uh, I'm waiting to catch up with the rest. <laughs> it will. It will. Um, <laughs> so how did you find keto? How'd you get started? Tell me like, you know, the beginning of the journey. Well, I, I've always probably for the last 20 years done some sort of low carb thing on and off unsuccessfully. One time it was successful, but gained it all back. And I started hearing about keto and I looked it up and let me tell you all the websites that I saw, everything was so confusing. Um, I didn't understand any of the terms and I, it was probably about six months that I researched it and I found a Facebook group 
that they're super strict. They have, um, <laughs> they have a, a, they're known for being kind of jerky. Some people say jerky. I liked it. Um, really strict, but they're pinned posts. They explained everything in the way that you, a, a normal person could <laughs> understand it and really grasp how to do it fully. And I started there and I started super strict and never stopped. That's cool. Can I ask you the name of the group? Uh, it's ketogenic dieters. Mm, I don't think I know that one. Okay. Cause I've been in groups that have been really strict and I just kind of laugh cause I'm very not dogmatic. Um, you know, I believe yeah. that, I don't know, I'm more of the healthy keto brand, like, um, very clean, not a lot of extra products per se, but just whole That's food. Oh, mm -hmm. is it? Okay, cool. That's awesome. So, so you had some guidance to help you over the hurdles. Yes, absolutely. And it was, it was definitely helpful. And I, I'm very grateful to that group for, you know, I was, I was more of a lurker. I never really posted anything. I just read and read and read everything. So what was different this time around from when you did low carb before and then gained it back? What was the difference? I, I was done. I was done with being unhealthy and I was done with being a bad role model for my kids. Um, and I was done with being unhappy and <clears throat> I just made, made up the, you know, the choice, the decision to finally get myself together. Um, I was drinking. It was a, it was a cycle. Um, I was in a depression. So then I would drink and then I would eat. And then the next day it would start all over again. You know, I drink and then I'd feel better. I'd feel happy <laughs> and then eat and so on and so on. Mm, sure. And and so I was able to stop that. Um, I honestly, I'm not sure how. <laughs> uh, I guess finally my mind just, I just made up my mind to do it. And I moved forward and I didn't have any alcohol until June of the following year. And um, you know, and I was just, I, I stayed on track and I don't, I don't carb cycle and uh, great for the people that can, <laughs> I, I can't. Um, and, and I just stayed, stayed on track. Cool. Yeah. I don't see the point in carb cycling for me, frankly, because it just makes me want more carbs. So I don't. Absolutely. So it was more of a mental thing than a, than a intake thing. Like the food was about the same or was it different? It sounds to me like it was an emotional, mental experience difference. Uh, it definitely was. I also, the difference this time too, when I first started keto was I cut out dairy. See, I would do low carb before and I would eat all the cheese and I'm like, it's low carb. <laughs> and I would just eat tons of cheese. And my mom, she would say, I don't understand how this um, keto thing is working for you. If you're eating all this cheese, I said, but you can, you can, because I was, you know, that was before that was during those six months, I was researching keto, and seeing all these people eating tons and tons of cheese. And I'm like, well, shoot, I'm gonna have a lot of cheese. No, it doesn't work for me that way. <laughs> Can I tell you a secret? So mm -hmm. in traditional cheese that you buy at the grocery store, it has casein one, okay? It's inflammatory. It's like, I think it's an enzyme, protein, protein enzyme, whatever, but it's inflammatory. So casein two, on the other hand, is found in sheep's milk, goat's milk products. So I buy like manchego cheese and authentic feta at Trader Joe's or goat cheese and that seems mm -hmm. that doesn't have the same inflammatory as 
um, like traditional cheese that you're going to buy. Oh, wow. So are you doing dairy now? Uh, right now I'm actually doing carnivore Monday. Uh -huh. I'm doing carnivore Monday through Friday. Okay. And, uh, and I don't have, I'm not having dairy with carnivore. Okay. That's another thing I want to talk about then. So you said that you lost 60 pounds from what, October, or November to February, something like that, or January. Right. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you started though in September. So did you, when you started in September, did you go to no cheese or did you start doing that in October? I'm pretty sure it was when I started. No, no, it was October. Okay. Okay. Well, I'm just yeah, curious yeah. It, to it see because you lost 60 pounds in three months, which is huge. Right. And part of it I'm sure is that like not drinking. Um, but I'm wondering if it fell off faster because you went off the dairy. I think so. Because even now when I eat cheese, even if it, they fit within my macros and I eat cheese, I stall. Try uh, Manchego and see okay. if that, like the goat or the sheep's milk, even it's getting so popular here, like in California at Whole Foods, they have sheep's milk yogurt. So oh, yeah. Really? Mm -hmm. Okay. And yeah, I just I'll have, have to look. I just had the biome test done, which by the way, listeners, it's a really good deal right now. It's like 129. And when I first did it, I paid 299. So biome is a really good way to test your gut microbiome. It will identify your superfoods, the foods to avoid, the foods to moderate, and then just whatever's regular. Um, but it will indicate whether or not your body will get inflamed from a certain food. So you can take it and see huh. if it if it would work. So tell where me about you, what? Where do you, I'm sorry? Where do you get Where do you get that test? Go to biome.com, v i o m e.com. And it's kind of gross. <laughs> I'm going to admit the way you have to do the test, it's a little poopy. <laughs> But uh -huh. it is a very, very, very accurate, valid, great test. So okay. I highly okay. recommend yeah. it. So from March, April, May, March, April, May, I'm going to follow all of the recommendations and um, then get tested again April, May, in June to see what difference it was. So it's cool. Anyways, getting back, when did you start carnivore? I'm so curious about that. I... Actually, for really this week, <laughs> I did it for the month of January, but I had cheese and, and I had granola, <laughs> um, keto granola, um, but it, that's not carnivore. So I really wasn't as carnivore as, you know, I should have been. So this week and, and I feel great. I feel I feel really good this week. I also did a 48 hour fast. So you started this all on Monday? I started the fast on Sunday. And then when I broke the fast on Tuesday is when I went into carnivore. Okay. So what, what have you been eating? I'm just so curious about it. On, on Tuesday, what did I have? steak I'm pretty sure it's usually what I break it with <laughs> um I know last night I made um carnivore taquitos how'd you do that you, um you know those the egg thins uh-uh I haven't seen uh, those the crepini egg thins um, they're like, they're made from egg whites and they're really thin and they're like tortilla size. And I, I made a pork butt in the pressure cooker and I put the pork butt in the, in the egg thin, rolled it up and fried it in the pan. And because it's egg thins, they're eggs. It's not like a tortilla. It doesn't soak up a ton of the oil. And then afterwards I drain on a paper towel and they get crispy just like taquitos. Where do you buy those? At the grocery store here. Um, they, they have them in the deli department. From what I understand, there has, some people have found them at Walmart, but my Walmart has the ones with cauliflower. 
The ones with cauliflower don't crisp up like mm. the egg white ones. Okay. Well, I'm going to have to find those because I can eat egg whites again. Hallelujah. Um, okay. <laughs> so that sounds amazing. Okay. So you had pork butt. Now I have a question because I tried to do carnivore for a day <laughs> or two <laughs> and I got so bored. Do you feel like that at all yet? No, no, I'm, I'm super creative with things. Um, there are times where I just want to keep it super simple and that's when I'll just have like sliced chicken breast. I'll, I'll prep a bunch of chicken breasts in the pressure cooker on Sunday and then have them for the whole week. And if I just want a simple week, I'll just eat, you know, chicken breast. Um, but otherwise I, I love being creative with, with keto recipes, carnivore recipes, anything that I can, that's a challenge. So what health benefits do you get by doing carnivore? Well, it helps with your muscle growth. Um, Honestly, I'm just learning all about carnivore right now, so I can't really explain everything about carnivore. Keto is more my thing that's, you know, Mm -hmm. um, especially since I really didn't do it that well in January like I should have. (laughs) So I didn't get the full benefits. I know that a lot of people experience uh, if they have gut issues, it really helps with that. Definitely with inflammation. Um, Sorry. That's okay. I I know it's a lot of energy. Oh, you because you said you felt good, so that's why I was curious as to like the difference. So, oh, okay, well, yeah, I definitely I have a lot more energy, and my my mood has been completely uplifted this whole week, mm-hmm. for sure. So well, that's that's a win. Know. Okay, that's yes. cool. Um, I like the energy part because you know it's high energy keto girl. I married two shows. I had two podcasts. It was too hard to manage, so I married them. It used to be called Be Well, Be Keto, and it was doing really great, and then I just couldn't keep up the demands with my clients and stuff. So, um, okay, so what about like when you hit a plateau? It's been a year and a half. Have you hit any? And what would you do to overcome it? Just keep pushing through. The thing is, is... I started going to the gym in November of 2018 and I went full. Like I started going, I was going six days a week, at least most actually seven days a week. Um, and I, I just started out slow. So I wasn't, that was, I wasn't, I didn't hit a plateau yet when I started adding in the weights and I got a trainer and when I was started doing a lot of lifting, that was when I definitely was not, the scale was not moving. And I, you know what? I just stopped weighing because I took measurements and I could feel the difference. I could see the difference in the measurements, the difference in my clothes. I don't put, I don't put anything on the scale. Mm-hmm. You know, I don't put my my hopes, my happiness, anything like that on the scale. Cool. You, you know, it's really interesting though, because so many people are stuck on that. I wrote a book called No Frickin' Way, 21 Days to Ditch the Diet and Lose Weight the Keto Way, blah, blah, blah. Anyway, but it's like, the reason I wrote that book is because I saw a quote one day on Facebook. It said, why weigh yourself when you can roll in broken glass and light yourself on fire and feel <laughs> the same way? <laughs> Exactly. <laughs> exactly, right? And, you know, I use this example all the time. You can have two girls, 5'6", 140. One's a couch potato, wears a size 10. One's an athlete, wears a size 6. But they weigh the same. So who cares? Exactly. You can't, you can't go off of, you can't go off of, I mean, when I was 16, I was wearing a size 3'5", and I weighed one. 50. Wow. How tall are you? So five, six. (laughs) Okay. So 
you can't yeah you can't really you can't go off of the numbers i've always i've always weighed heavy and so i i can't compare myself to anybody else mm -hmm. and others you know shouldn't compare their weight either which is why i don't actually put my weight out there the numbers out there because those aren't that's not what's important mm -hmm. exactly i do this thing called the lean lady challenge and everybody comes to get lean like it's like that's the name of the game but I always talk about aging stronger and healthier instead of weaker and sicker because that's all I care about, you know? Um, mm -hmm. Just if you're not getting stronger, you're getting weaker. And so many people have health challenges that can be avoided by eating clean, anti-inflammatory food. Yes, definitely. So how yeah, are your I'm, kids? My daughter is 13 and my son is 18. Okay, because I see that adorable picture behind you kissing a baby. <laughs> yes, that was 16 years ago. That is so, <laughs> so precious. I love it. So what advice would you give somebody who's just starting out? It's such a cliche, totally, but trust the process. Don't give up because, again, because the scale's not moving. Um, as long as you are hitting your, your, as long as you're doing your macros, hitting your protein, staying under 20 carbs, it's, it's going to work. Did you do total or net? I go back and forth. And, and it's usually with the vegetables you know, um, that I'll do net. <laughs> so, um, and, and it's not even really that often I do when I'm not doing carnivore, I'm still staying extra low carb. If I have vegetables, it's with my dinner and sometimes maybe just like a couple pieces of broccoli, just cause maybe I miss it. But for the most part, I try to stay as super low carb as I can. So if you, like you said, you usually have vegetables for just dinner. Um, what do you do for lunch typically? Um, typically, one of my favorite lunches, like I mentioned before with the chicken breast, is oh. um, I make like chicken nachos. Chicken what? I'll slice the chicken breast. Chicken nachos. Oh. Chicken nachos. <laughs> <laughs> um. I will slice the chicken breast and then I, um, so they're in like chip size slices and I'll top it with uh, guacamole and just a little tiny sprinkle of cheese and hot sauce. Mm, you know, it'd be good. Um, that company 4505 sent me a ton of pork rinds and they're sitting in my mm. pantry because if I open a bag, it's gone. But you can make chicken nachos with those. Mm hmm I've done that before. I've made nachos with pork rinds. How'd they turn out? So good. So good. Oh yeah. Oh, my gosh. Okay, I'm going to make those. That but again, good. it's the, the cheese. <laughs> Do a test on yourself and try manchego cheese and see if you get inflamed from it. I mean, it's all pure sheep's milk. Do you have a Trader Joe's by you? I, in West Palm, but yeah. Okay. I can, I go to it sometimes. Yeah. They have like four different types of sheep's cheese, two feta type and two manchego type. They even have it at our Costco. That's when I go to Trader Joe's is when I go to Costco. <laughs> oh, well, it's cheaper at Costco. Get it there. <laughs> so Christy, okay. I heard a little rumor that you make some pretty awesome granola. So tell me all about the juicy details, girl. Uh, yes, I, that is true. I make um, keto granola, low carb, sugar free, gluten free. It has one net carb per serving. There's eight ounces in each bag, eight servings per bag. And it's all made from clean ingredients, nuts. Uh... <laughs> That's good. Hey, so it's only. One gram of net carbs per 
serving and there's eight servings, so I can eat the whole bag and only have eight grams of carbs? Well, that is true. Yes. However, <laughs> there is lots of, you know, not, not lots of calories, but you know, you got to calorie content. Well, um, let's see the bag. Let's see the bag. But, Show me the bag. Oh, that is so cute. Eat keto love, low carb, sugar free, clean. Ah, now let's see. My what... son created the labels. Ah, that is adorable. Wow. And to go and do all the work to be able to, you know, put something together like that, I'm impressed. Yeah. Um, and I have different flavors. Flavors. Uh, I create not just normal type of granola flavors. Like I have a couple flavors that are after Girl Scout cookies, one that's after Samoa, and then one that's after Thin Mints as well. So... Yum. Um, that was clever too. <laughs> creative. <laughs> so where can people order this? It sounds amazing. Uh, through you currently through my Facebook page, eat keto love, uh, message me through there. I'm getting my website put together now. And once that's up, then you can just be ordered directly through the website and shipped directly through Facebook order it and it still gets shipped to you directly but you know with the website it'll be much more fun so what's the url just so we can put it in the show notes or maybe if somebody's listening a month from now then they'll be able to order direct like that for the facebook the granola page do you have a url yet like a website yet <clears throat> it's eatketolovegranola.com oh perfect okay Cool. Mm -hmm. And I'll put that link in the show notes page along with your Facebook page so that then they can find you simple. Okay, perfect. Yay. I'm so Thank impressed. You. What a great girl. You have 110 pounds lost. You've come up with a really low carb keto granola. That's awesome. Yeah, it satisfies your crunch and sweet tooth possibly that you might have. Um, there's also salty and sweet and yeah. And how many different flavors do you have? I have, I, I rotate flavors. So oh. currently I've, I've made eight different flavors. Um, right now I have cinnamon toast crunch, peanut butter chocolate chip, lemon haze, which some people have told me it's like the Starbucks pound cake, oh. the lemon pound cake. I love that. Uh, and then the two... Uh, the two Girl Scout cookie flavors. I also have a brownie chip. So I cycle, I cycle flavors in and out at, at, uh, Thanksgiving time, of course, or fall, I made a pumpkin spice. Oh, that's good. Wow. Look at you go, girl. I love it. Awesome. Mm -hmm. So are you still lifting weights? I am. Yes. Um, I, I had to, I have to take a break though, because, of course, I injure myself. Um, pretty sure I overextended my elbow, but so that's been really frustrating lately. Um, it's my my left arm, so I keep pushing myself, and then I end up hurt again. So, so I do a lot of cardio now. Again, I used to do a whole bunch of cardio, and then uh, my trainer said, "Stop doing that." <laughs> it, it not all together, but just as much as I was doing, I was doing at least an hour every day. Mm. And he's like, stop doing that. Let's shock your body. <laughs> and he gave me, he gave me a workout, um, with, with dumbbells. And I actually got to that part of the gym that terrified me, you know, with all the guys in front of the mirrors and, and actually having to stand there in front of the mirror, staring at yourself, lifting, and it was it was rather nerve wracking. But now, now I'm like, get out of my way. <laughs> yeah, that's good. That's good. Own it. <laughs> right. Right. Yeah. I don't mind now. <laughs> oh, good. How long has it been? How long did it take you to get over that hurdle? Because I know that so many women feel the same way. They're intimidated by it. Oh, about a year. Oh. I got, 
my trainer gave me the, the, the plan. Um, I met him and he gave me, uh, his workout plan that he made the customized workout plan that he made for me. I think it was November. And I had started the November before. And when I would go, I would go and I would use the weight machines and do just whatever I felt like doing. So I really wasn't making much progress because I didn't have an actual routine. I didn't have a set schedule or anything. So that's cool. And now you do. Awesome. And now I do. So now that you've seen both sides of the cardio queen or the weightlifting badass, which one do you like better? Weightlifting, for sure. It's cool. 100%. Mm-hmm. It's so empowering. And I believe it's better for you because I think that the chronic cardio actually creates too much stress in your body. And you work mm-hmm. so hard to build this muscle and then you go try to burn it all off with the cardio, you know? So Right. Exactly. Yeah, that's cool. Awesome. Well, how can people find you? How can our listeners find you? I have an Instagram account, Eat Keto Love. And I also have a Facebook account, Eat Keto Love. And yeah. (laughs) Awesome. Well, thank you so much, Christy, for coming on the show today. I love chatting with you and I'm so, so happy for you. 110 pounds. Whether you like to weigh yourself or not, that is a lot. Yes, it is. It is. And I'm, yeah, I'm, I'm super happy for myself, you know, and I'm, I, I'm ecstatic. I'm actually a happy person now. Yay. And yeah, that's, that's cool. You're doing a good job for the keto community. So thank you for that too. Thank you. Thank you for having me. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. And let's go and support Christy. Head on over to the show notes page so you can grab the link and check out her amazing granola. If you know anyone who'd be a great fit for the show, please contact me at Tracy at highenergygirl.com. That's Tracy with two E's. And we would love a rating and review so other people can find the show and be inspired to stick with a ketogenic lifestyle. All right, you guys, make it a great day. This podcast contains the opinion and thoughts of its host and guests. It is intended to provide helpful and informative material on the subjects covered. All statements made on the podcast have not been evaluated by the FDA and are not intended to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent disease. If the listener requires professional assistance or advice, please contact your personal medical doctor. Both host and guests specifically disclaim any responsibility for any liability, loss, or risk, personal or otherwise, which is incurred as a consequence directly or indirectly of the use and application of any of the contents of these episodes. Like I said, this is my opinion and I could be wrong.